Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to my Minecraft developer... Hey! No littering! My Minecraft developer snapshot test drive video for uh, version 13W17A, also known as 1.5.2 pre-release. And this is out today, April 25th, 2013. I will deal with you, you know, you, you litter bug. Sheesh. What's the crime for littering? Uh, what's the penalty for littering? It is certainly a crime. I think I... You know what it is? I think it's... It's two egg lashings. That's what it is. Stand still, spike chicken. Two egg la... No. <laughs> That'll teach him. All right. Anyway, so I have a staging area all set up here for uh, this test drive. And why don't we get started? Now, there really isn't that much to share with you. Unfortunately, there's only a few new items, but... Did a zombie just fall out of the sky? I do believe so. Okay, we'll get to that later. Um, that's a new feature. And I'm holding up my my hands here in quotations. Feature. Anyway, so Wilson, you, my friend, are going to get an identity. This is something I have been pining for for some time. And I'm really extremely excited about it. Finally, name tags. Thank you, Dinnerbone. Thank you, sir. I have been asking for this. In fact, let me show you something that I tweeted out to Dinnerbone after um, after they added after they added uh, the ability to name eggs in creative. Um, here, hang on. Yeah, yeah, true story. I saw those guys on the way to work one day. Anyway, so quick history lesson. Yes, we are able to in 1.5. This was added, the ability to rename eggs, spawn eggs. So if we wanted a pig named Larry, we could do that. Drop it into an anvil, pay five, low, low, low price of five levels, and you get a spawn egg with a name on it. And there we go. Larry, welcome to Earth or something. Um, so now, I, and after that happened, I was like, that's pretty cool stuff, but what about all our existing aminals and pets? So there we go, and now we have the ability. So I'm gonna stop talking now, and I'm gonna show you exactly how this works. <laughs> all right, I wrote the book on name tags, apparently. In fact, uh, Dinnerbone tweeted out yesterday when the snapshot came out. Um, he said, hey, here's a new snapshot, and there's something in here for Paul Soros Jr. So yay. Um, anyway, <laughs> so let's let's take a look at the book. Name tags. Name existing mobs. They're found in dungeon chests. There is no crafting recipe for these. I don't know if that's just now or forever. Um, you engrave the name tags in an anvil. They're single use only, so once you use it, it is gone. Uh, you cannot name villagers. Boo. Maybe that'll be added someday, but uh, we'll see. Visible. Um, you can see the name tag, the name over the animal's head, mob's head, when you're within seven blocks. You name a horse by mounting. Mounting? Okay, I need to look up what mounting is because I don't know if I've ever done that to a horse and I don't know if I want to. Anyway, yeah, when you mount it, yeah, actually that means hop on it first and then right click. Anyway, okay, and it prevents despawning and that is awesome. Let's put the book back. Let me show you how this works. So you basically take your name tag and again, these can be found in um, dungeons, right? Um, and I have a seed I'm going to share with you later here in a moment. And you put your name tag in your anvil and you give it a name. We're going to name Wilson. My dog, my dog, Wilson. And then you just right click on him, bam. And he disengages butt mode and now he's so happy. I'm somebody, you're somebody Wilson. You're in the phone book now. Okay, that's the coolest thing right there. And let's move on to something else. Oh, deserts are now more deserty. Yeah, there's a desert. We're going to take a look at that in a moment. But first, let's do this. An extra tooltip in creative inventory. So when you go into creative and you point to something, you get this uh, the little blue label beneath the, the name of the item, which gives you kind of a, a general in, general indication of what it is. Tool, building block, etc. Um, oops, what happened there, man? Maybe you can only get it in this, in this under this tab. No, say it ain't so. Bam. Um, all right. So, next. Now we have hardened clay. And this is the stuff right here. It's kind of a, uh, a baked clay look, which is pretty cool. And let me show you how you do it. Basically, you take regular clay block and you toss it in a furnace and you get hardened clay. In fact, I've got some right here. I'm just, whoops. No, that's, yeah. Mm -hmm. There we go. And that's it. So there it goes. It cooks. 
cooks it up nicely and you can use it as a building block. I don't think you can shape it into anything, but I have a little uh, shaman's hut here to give you an example of how that looks. I like it. Thank you, Wilson. Now, what's this? Uh, oh, wait, we, we cannot do this one yet because it's a little nutty. Uh, here's what we're going to do. Let's fly over here to the desert. Let's see if the desert's more deserty. Now, this particular desert was created with the last snapshot, so I'm going to have to leave and come back. But I want to show you what it looks like right now. Let's wait for it. Wait for it. I think we're going to get more sand dunes, is the word on Reddit. So let's let this load up. And then we're going to compare this to when I come back. I, I'm pretty sure this chunk has already been generated. Again, with the last snapshot, because this is the same map that I use for all my snapshot test drives, at least for the 1.6. Alright, yeah, I don't know how... If this is the new or the old. But take a look at this. Oh, look, a temple. Nice. And what we're going to do is quit and come back. I'm going to recreate this thing. Let's just do this. Oh, my dog just followed me over, didn't he? We're going to take this and we're going to do recreate copy of. And now it's going to regenerate it with this latest snapshot code. And here's the testing grounds, which obviously all my stuff is gone. Oh, by the way, there's a dungeon down there. I want to show you that. Maybe there's some name tags in there. And there is a seed I want to share with you right after this. Oh, this is definitely different because I think the desert was larger a minute ago, wasn't it? Larger as in, like, size over here. I think it was more expansive. Okay. Oh, look, a dungeon. Let's go check it out. No name tag. Name tags! Woohoo! That is so cool. That is awesome. Alright, I, I don't know if this has been changed any. But, okay, so deserts are definitely more deserty. That's That's all it says. We'll have to figure out what that means exactly. And, oh, is that another dungeon? Two dungeons in this desert. This is not a deserty dungeon. This is a, a deserty desert. This is a dungeony desert. So clever. Okay, this one I'm still a little bit confused by. It says zombies are now more sociable. That's what it says in the actual change log. And I've tried various things. I've got the sunlight up. Oh, there we go. And uh, they instantly catch on fire, as a good zombie should. And then you've got others falling out of the sky. So this kind of reminds me of what happens when you have silverfish. <laughs> when you hurt a silverfish and it makes a call to friends. So I guess this is what Dinnerbone means by being more sociable. So if you hurt one, they're all going to attack and, uh, and cry out for help. It's kind of like kicking a hornet's nest, I suppose. Now I don't know if it's dependent upon difficulty level. I tried it and right now I'm on hard difficulty. I tried it on normal. I get the same results. Now let's turn it back to night. And I think it's when they when they take damage, whether it's from me or the sun or what have you. Oh my gosh. It's, uh, it's a good thing I'm in creative mode here. Oh, <laughs> well, that's a horde. Ooh, are they running faster or is it just me? All right, well, they're not falling out of the sky anymore. So I think maybe it is just when they're taking damage. Or maybe there's a limit on them. Again, this is just going to require some more testing. We'll see how social they really are. I don't recommend doing this at your next... Uh, social event, if you're going to have a tea party or a pool party or something. Um, I would leave the sword uh, in, in the sword case or on the mantle or wherever you happen to have your uh, smite 5 uh, fire aspect to knock back to sword. Or just don't invite zombies and you should be okay. You should be good. Alright, I think we're done here. I know I mentioned that I would show you another map seed that had a, a dungeon directly under the spawn. And inside that dungeon, there were some uh, some name tags. But I guess we don't need that anymore since this one has those name tags in the dungeon in the desert. So let me just give you the seed. Here it is. Bam! And I'll put that um, in the description below so you can just copy and paste it rather than try to type it out yourself. Oh, wait. I almost forgot. If you name it a, uh, a mob that would normally despawn like uh, a zombie pigman or a gigantic slime. For example, I have a little slime called Booger Fleming in my solo survival let's play. He's actually a much smaller booger than that. That's a big booger. But uh, 
they won't despawn. So that's awesome for pets that you don't want to lose. Like if you have a zombie pigman friend or a, uh, uh, a friend spider during the day that turns on you at night. We've got Shilab, Zisto, and of course Booger Fleming. So that's pretty cool stuff. Okay, I think we can go now. All right, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs> All right, Booger Fleming. Hang tight, I'll be back. I'm just going to get a little obsidian. Try to keep it close so he doesn't despawn. <laughs> I never had a slime pet. Should be interesting. I'll be back, little bugger. I'll be back. <laughs>